Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Safeco Insurance. Find a local agent at Safeco.com. By the Emerald Queen Casino, welcoming 80s power pop star Rick Springfield. October 1st, tickets at EmeraldQueen.com. And by your local Ford store. Kings Court beginning to round up here inside Minute Maid Park in downtown Houston, Texas. Looking good. Mariners a chance for a series win here tonight behind King Felix. Let's take a look at some scores from around the wild card push that have already gotten underway as the Mariners are moments away from first pitch here in Houston. Tigers leading 5 0. Mike, they have Verlander up on the mound. The Indians clinching the Central last night. A, a party at Naples uh, after the game, as they've been saying. And as a result, Abraham Almonte is hitting third for the Indians tonight. You had to figure this score was not going to go the Mariners' <laughs> way tonight because of the Indians clinching and Mike Napoli throwing the nice party for the team afterwards. <laughs> Take a look at the updated Delta Airlines keep climbing wild card standings with the win last night and the Tigers' loss. The Mariners and the Tigers entering today. Both two games in back of the Orioles. Baltimore and Toronto beginning the series. The Blue Jays leading 3 to 1. Good pitching matchup. Sanchez versus Gossman in that one. The remaining schedule for those contending right now in the American League wildcard push. Blue Jays will finish on the road at Fenway Park. That'll be a big one, especially with the Red Sox pushing for home field advantage. Four game series in progress for the Tigers versus the Indians. They finish up in the National League against the Braves. Blue Jays and Yankees both on the road for the Orioles. And of course, you know what the Mariners are doing, finishing up at home with four against the Oakland Athletics. First pitch is right around the corner. This is a big one. Mariners and the Astros. The King is up on the bump. First pitch is next. Good look at Jeff Bagwell just outside Minute Maid Park here in downtown Houston as the Mariners getting set for the middle game of the series. Mike's pick to click. Kyle Seeger, a fan coming in as the roof is open for the first time since May the 20th here inside Minute Maid Park. Only the 12th time this year they have played with the roof open. So this is a bit of a treat. Will no doubt be closed tomorrow for day baseball here in Houston. Norioki leading things off once again for the Mariners facing righty Mike Fires. Oki swinging a pretty hot bat these days. Now the first pitch from Fires misses outside for ball one. Mariners entering tonight 
two games back with six games left. And the situation even more dire these days for the Astros. Back to fires. One out. Mike, how about we take a look at the Mariners lineup? And for manager Scott Service, hitting third in the lineup, Robinson Cano. He was the hero last night. A couple of home runs for him, including the go-ahead home run in the 11th inning. You see what he's done against the Astros overall. 17 games, 353, eight home runs, 20 RBIs for Cano against the Astros. Nelson Cruz, a couple of hits and an RBI in last night's ballgame. He leads the club with 101 RBIs. Kyle Seeger on base three times, two for four last night. He is three for seven with a home run against Fires. And for Mike Fires, 11 game winner, a 4.40 ERA. Opponents hitting 277 against him, and he's given up 26 home runs. That's something that the Mariners have done all year is hit the home run. So hopefully, a couple of them will find the seats tonight. One of the best home run hitting teams in baseball. Smith into center field. Marisnik having a charge, and he's able to barely keep his feet and make the catch. Well, hit right of the screws by Seth Smith, but two outs. Can't hit it much harder than this. It's knuckling out to center field. Marisnik thought he was going to have to die for it, but it curved back to him. He was able to make the catch standing on his feet. And as you see, Jake Marisnik in center. He can cover a lot of ground out in center field. Jose Altuve at second base. Seven errors on the year for Altuve. Jason Castro will do the catching. He's thrown out 22% of would-be base dealers this year. Four pitches and two outs for Fires. Now facing... Well, the Astros boogeyman, Robinson Cano. That home run that he hit last night and ended up winning the game for the Mariners. You talk about a big time star coming up in a big time way in an absolute nearly must win for the Mariners. That was as clutch as it comes. Well, it was, and especially when you look at the Mariners over the last four or five games. The opposite way into the corner. Kemp was way off the line and Robinson Cano just continues to get on base against the Astros a two out double <laughs> with the way that he's been going against Houston this year <laughs> any other left hander hits this ball it probably goes foul but of course it's going to stay fair for Robinson Cano. He'll pick up a double had a double in last night's ball game and his first at bat. Now this is something that A.J. Hinch told us earlier today before batting practice. He said, I've tried to pitch him inside. I've tried to pitch him outside. I've walked him. <laughs> Even when I walk him, it backfires on me. Just cannot get Robinson Cano out. I saw a number on Cano today that I thought was interesting. And, and to that point, trying to do a lot of different things, 35 home runs now on the year. He leads Major League Baseball, 15 of his home runs on off-speed pitches, 20 on the fastball. So everybody's trying everything against him. Just having a special year. Really played well for the Mariners. Now early the Mariners get a chance for an at bat with the runner in scoring position. Something that has been a struggle for the Mariners in recent days. But Mike you and I were talking about this well before the game on the season as a whole it has been really at times a strength for the Mariners. Well it has been until recently overall this year hitting with runners in scoring position 258 batting average that'll be a base hit. Cano steams into third makes a turn he goes home. And a nice start for the Mariners a two out double followed by an RBI single from Nelson Cruz and it's one to nothing early on. Nelson now with 102 RBIs on the year. Going to be an off speed pitch it looks as if he hits it towards the end of the bat. And it is. That's a split change up from Fires. Fires a split change and a curveball for his off speed pitches. And Nelson hits it right back up the middle. So a good start for the Mariners with runners in scoring position. But as a team hitting 258 at the start of today, at times we've been up around that 270 mark until their recent struggles, which when you consider their struggles last year, hitting right around 230, a big improvement. And they've been able to get away with a little bit more this year too because they continue to hit the ball out of the ballpark. First pitch strike to Seeger. So the Mariners last night one for 15 with runners in scoring position. Seeger, of course the only man with that hit which hit the second base umpire and did not drive in the run. Nelson Cruz was at second he had to stay there because when the line drive hit the umpire the ball is dead. Kyle ended up getting a hit but Nelson had to stay at second. 
Into the shift, Altuve scampering after it, snares it. A bounce, not in time. Try as they might with the shift, it did not work. Three consecutive hits with two outs. And each of the first five hitters here tonight against Fires have made contact on the second pitch that he's thrown as Seager continues that trend. And this looks like it's on the changeup again. The split change just out of the reach of Gonzalez, the first baseman. It can play by Altuve. Doesn't get much on the throw, and Kyle able to beat it out. Only today do you see a second baseman making that throw. <laughs> Only in today's game do you see a second baseman catching the <laughs> ball in that area. First pitch strike to Adam Lynn. Altuve still out on the grass towards right field with Adam hitting. Breaking ball is laced the opposite way and foul 0 2. And to your point, Aaron, another Mariner hitter swinging at the second pitch. <laughs> that time a curveball. Now, Fires, for the most part, really baffled the Mariners in his last start against Seattle back at home. This was in the trend on the last homestand where we heard Scott Service mentioning that the Astros were pitching the Mariners backwards. It was McHugh and then it was Fires. But McHugh didn't really do that quite as much last night. He, he, he was using his fastball early in the ball game, and the Mariners were hitting his fastball. And then he started to change up, especially when runners were in scoring position. We saw his curveball a lot more. He had a good curveball last night. He was also using his cutter against the lefties. For Fires, it's mostly going to be a split change curveball. Against the Mariners in Seattle, he went six innings, just three hits. The Mariners did not score a run off of him. They were, they were able to get to him earlier this year in July here in this ballpark. He went three and a third. Put four earned runs on him in three and a third. Seeger at first base, Cruz at second. The 2 2. Off the hands and foul. And listen to you talk about Scott Service talking about the Astros pitching the Mariners backwards. Basically, it comes down to hitters' counts. We talk about it all the time. 2 and 0. 3 1, even 2 1 at times, 3 and 2, you expect to get a fastball. Houston did not give in. They were typically throwing their changeup or their breaking ball when they were behind in the count. And then when they were ahead, they were pitching them inside with the fastball. That's, that's where the problems were coming. And for the Mariners, a team that likes to hit the fastball, hit the ball out of the ballpark, it, it caused them problems. But the good news is they have a bunch of veteran hitters, and I expected them to make an adjustment to fires tonight. Lynn aiming for an eight game hitting streak here today. Here comes pitch number seven to Lynn. And another foul. Now the Mariners entering tonight winners of four of their last five. They have played three consecutive one run games. And of course leading baseball in that category. It's been the case for much of this season. If the Mariners haven't been leading in that category they've been you know, right behind. There's been more of the same for the most part for the Mariners. The three two. That ends the top of the first inning a couple of left but Nelson Cruz an RBI base hit right up the middle and Felix right away working with the run.
Felix working here tonight on an extra day's rest only his second start against the Astros this year it is his first from inside Minute Maid Park as we take a look at the A's. Astros lineup is penciled in by A.J. Hinch and it's really the first four hitters that are dangerous George Springer leading off two five last night with a run scored he has 28 home runs in the leadoff spot Marwin Gonzalez in his career 306 average against the Mariners a couple of hits for him last night Jose Altuve hitting 338 and 210 hits both leads the American League and Evan Gaddis hitting fifth 31 home runs on the year that leads the team for Felix Hernandez looking for his 12th win 144 and two thirds innings 116 strikeouts over 63 walks opponents hitting just 230 against Felix ball one to George Springer in the midst of a seven game hitting streak packs a lot of punch in that leadoff spot with 28 homers. Now for the Astros any combination of three losses by Houston and Orioles wins officially eliminates A.J. Hinch's ball club from any chance of playing in the postseason. Two and one. So if the Mariners win tonight and if the Orioles win tonight against the Blue Jays the elimination number for this Astros ball club would be one. They could be knocked out as soon as tomorrow. Two and two. And there's the curveball from Felix. Felix in his last outing against Toronto really pitched well. And a reason why I think is his curveball usage went up. Higher percentage with his curveball, 23% in his last outing. And he was able to throw it for a strike early in the count and then bounce it when he was ahead in the count to get the strikeout. Cano can't get there. Springer, a leadoff base hit. Leadoff man aboard for Marwin Gonzalez. It's not a fastball, 91 miles an hour at the knees, but it is in the middle of the plate. Look at the defense for the Mariners. Leonis Martin really having a super year out in center field. They brought him in to play defense. He certainly has done that. Robinson Cano, just two errors on the year. I had to start talking about him winning a gold glove. Jesus Sucre will do the catching for Felix this evening. So Springer now an eight game hitting streak leads things off with a single that brings in Marwin Gonzalez. You mentioned that curveball just simply by the numbers in his last start 26 curveballs from Felix his second highest total of any start this year and Scott said today from inside his office that even more than the curveball what he liked from Felix against the Blue Jays is simply how often he was getting ahead of hitters early. That being said tonight we've seen ball one to each of the first two. Well it was also the quality of those strikes and it doesn't change. We saw it last night with Iwakuma early in the count whether it's the first or second pitch you have to make a quality strike. And once you do that you can expand the zone. Houston strikes out a lot. They will swing at pitches off the plate. But to get them to do that you have to be able to get strike one. Martin. Angling just a bit. One down. And for Felix in his last outing against Houston, I felt they were very aggressive with Felix. Typically, he will make the adjustment, start using his changeup. But I think his curveball would be a good pitch for him to steal a strike early in the count. One out, one on for Jose Altuve, who had a bit of a scare last night when he rolled over his wrist at second base, but everything okay with Altuve. You see that from time to time, he was diving for a ball back up the middle. And sometimes that glove will just stick into the ground and that's what happened to him and he rolled right over the top of it. Backs him away ball one. Altuve a 500 hitter against Felix in his career 11 for 22. And only two strikeouts. Clubbed out to left. Aoki off the garage doors. Springer 
Waved in from third base, loses his helmet. Here comes the throw home. And it's not a time. Gets away from Sucre, and Altuve winds up at third. We're all tied up. And this will be the fastball. 91 miles an hour, trying to throw it to the outside corner. Ends up middle in. Oki is able to get the cutoff man, Marte. But an in-between hop for Sucre at the plate. Tough throw to handle. And once it gets away from Sucre, Altuve will move up. Springer can run. A lot of speed. You can see right off the cut of the grass. One out of run in and brings in Carlos Correa and the go ahead run out Tuve is now at third base. Astros take the lead. Altuve skips home and Correa wasting no time going after the first pitch. Pretty good pitch curveball just off the outside corner down. It's off the end of the bat, but that is a base hit. You can see his hands out in front of it. Now for Correa, 96 RBIs this year. Brings in Gaddis. That was 31 home runs for Gaddis, a career high. Foul ball to make it one and one. Through the first four batters in the lineup, Felix had only thrown 10 pitches. I threw four of those to Springer, but then Gonzalez on the second pitch, Altuve on the second pitch, Correa on the very first. One out, one on. Yeah, it's waiting for it. A little dribbler. Seeger has no clean grip. Three straight base hits for the Astros. Well, you mentioned it with Gaddis hitting 31 home runs. Everybody's playing deep, and once it gets past Felix, Kyle trying the barehanded play. It's the only option he had. Brings in Guriel, the third baseman. Remember the last time Felix was here at Minute Maid Park, it was a disaster for the King. He could not escape the first inning. Over to Cano, on to first base. And a double play ends the Astros here in the first, but a couple of runs in, and Houston has an early lead.
Mariners baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Safeco Insurance. Find a local agent at Safeco.com. And by Amtrak Cascades. What a beautiful way to travel. Visit AmtrakCascades.com. Astros have taken a 2-1 lead. RBIs from two of the main culprits, Correa and Altuve, now both with 96 on the season. Bottom third of the order due up for the Mariners to face Mike Fires. First pitch to Martin. And he looks at ball one. Altuve very deep at second base. Clobbered foul one and one. Now the Mariners now 13 and 5 in their last 18 games. Only the Red Sox are better in that span. Boston a chance to clinch the East with a win tonight against the Yankees. To Altuve, ranging a low pick across his body in time. Leadoff man retired. It brings in Sucre. Well, the pursuit of the playoffs continue this Thursday in Seattle when the Mariners take on the A's for a four-game series set at Safeco Field. So let your voice be heard at all four games. Help the Mariners keep fighting. Get your tickets at Mariners.com. What a huge series that will be, and it will be Felix lined up for Sunday, game 162. We hope to see you there. Ball one to Sucre. Sucre in his last start, two for three, including his first home run of the year. That was in Minnesota. That was just kind of more the same for Jesus recently, hasn't <laughs> it? It has been. We shouldn't be surprised anymore. The home run was a little bit surprising because it seems that all of his base hits are line drives right back up the middle. And then he finally turned on the ball and hit it into the seats on a fastball that was inside. Now it is not easy to double over Byron Buxton's head. And that's what he did. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. One out, nobody on Astros on top. Two and two. Just flips the corner. Sucre able to hold back. We have seen Sucre catching Felix recently. This has been a trend that continues here tonight. Riznik charging and he can't make the catch. 500 hitter Jesus Sucre on base. What's new? He's going to get jammed a little bit. Great effort by Mariznik. You'll see this a lot in the series from Mariznik. He covers a lot of ground. Not afraid to get dirty in the outfield. He had it for a split second. One out, one on for Cattell Marte. Cattell in a little bit of a rough patch these days. Two for his last 23. Both those hit singles. Take a look at our Primera Super Mower and the effort. He had it right there, but then his glove opens up when he hits the ground. Well, we have seen Marisnik. All over the place defensively in recent years, including pull out sprawl onto Tows Hill. He's made some great catches against the Mariners. That was almost another one. Gets a piece, stays alive.
You can see the numbers last eight games for Marte. Gurriel up on the grass, right at the cut of the grass at third base. And the 0 2. Castro able to keep it in front of him. Well, the Mariners already have gotten more off of fires in the first inning than they did in his last start against the Mariners when he went six scoreless and just three hits. Back at safe go field, the Mariners a run on three hits in the first. So off to a good start. Castro busy behind home, two and two. And then here in the early going, Fires isn't nearly as sharp as he was at Safeco Field, so the Mariners need to take advantage of that. AJ Hinch last year guiding a very young Astros team to the wild card game, then on to the divisional series against the Royals. Here comes the 2 2. Right side and through. Marte finds a hit. Now the Mariners stack a couple of base runners. Sucre into second. That's worked by Marte with two strikes against him. He's able to lay off a couple of curveballs, some off speed pitches, and he finally gets a fastball that he can handle out over the plate. Again, fires fastball is going to be 89, 90 miles an hour. Finds a hole on the right side of the infield. The Mariners have two on with one out for Norioki back to the top of the order. Starts him off with strike one. The win last night for the Mariners snapped a four game losing streak inside this ballpark. This has not been an easy place for the Mariners in recent years. Springer now going back and it's over Springer's head. Sucre coming around he scores Marte tiptoes and puts on the brakes at third. He did not see this very often over George Springer in right field and this game is all tied up at two apiece. Well he's going to get a fastball in the middle of the plate he puts a charge in it. Springer was playing shallow in right field and he just drives a line drive right over the top of his head. You know Mike I say you don't see that very often but I remember him doing that at Safeco Field as well Springer that is having one over his head and at that time I remember thinking the exact same thing he's such a good defender in right more times than not we've seen him go back and make the play you're right about the two occasions and especially this one today but to make that happen one he has to play in which he was with Aoki hitting the leadoff hitter for the Mariners but if you square it up you don't give him enough time to get back brings in Seth Smith and for Aoki because that pitch was up in the zone in the middle of the plate he was able to get a lot of backspin on it. Mariners have answered right back. And with the narrative for the Mariners entering today, difficulties with the runners in scoring position, already a couple of hits. Marisnik caps out underneath it. Marte at third, coming home. Marisnik's throw, cut off, throw to third. The run counts. Mariners have taken the lead. Take another look. Good job by Marte. He looked like he was running hard the entire way, and I think he touches the plate before Aoki's called out, and he certainly does. And we'll take a look at it. The inning comes to a quick close, but the Mariners strike twice, and they're on top.
Elke and Smith with their fingerprints on that frame as we take a look at the out of town scoreboard. Blue Jays leading four to one over the Orioles. Very good news for the Mariners. As the bottom of the second starts off with strike one to Tony Kemp. Blue Jays leading the Orioles by a game in the standings. The Mariners two games outside of Baltimore. Phoenix ahead 0 2. Tony Kemp, a rookie left fielder for the Astros, taking over for Colby Rasmus, who looks like he is done for the rest of the year. Hip issue, among other things. And Felix makes quick work of Tony Kemp for a strikeout for the King. Eighty-eight miles an hour, right on the outside corner. We talked about it before the game with Felix, and you look at the Astros and their lineup. You have to take advantage of the lower half of the lineup. On the last three hitters, really struggling this year. Kemp hitting seventh in the lineup. Felix to pick up the strikeout, his first strikeout of the game. Meanwhile, the Blue Jays have added another run. They're on top, five to one over the Orioles. As they play in the fifth. End of the shift. Marte staying with it, and the throw is in time for a quick out number two on Jason Castro. Now, time to take a look at our Big Fish Casino big catch. And this play by Cattell Marte. Well, Mariners have the shift on, and Castro hits right into it. Catches it at first. You can see his glove get turned over on his wrist. Similar to what Altuve did last night, but able to stay with the play. Oh my God, I don't know if you're noticing the music right now. So the ballpark. That was the Jurassic Park theme. That is Jake Marisnik's walk up song. Okay. Jake loves dinosaurs, Blow. This is this is a thing. Oh, okay. It's uh one of the one of the more unique walk up songs, I would say, by a major leaguer these days. So he requested it. Oh yeah. No, this is his thing. He's a T Rex guy. And who isn't really? To Seeger, I'm a big bound. Takes his time. Six pitches. Side retired in order as we go to the third. Mariners on top. Two as we go to the top of the third. Well, it's a game celebrating our youngest Mariners fans. Join us for Kids Appreciate Appreciation Day this Sunday at 12:10 for surprises, prizes, mascots, and a whole lot more. All kids will score a Mariner Moose poster courtesy of Ivers in Kid Valley. Visit Mariners.com for tickets.
Cano leads off the top of the third looking at ball one. Only 529 here in Houston this season for Ravi. Including a double in his last at bat here tonight. Mariners a run in the first two runs in the second against fires. And now Cano behind. Fires in Robbie's first at bat ended up throwing a cutter in on his hands. It jammed him fought it off down the left field line. Yeah, Kemp was way off the line and, and left field made it very easy for Cano to coast into second base. It's in way up top. I always thought this was kind of an interesting left field to try to play here at Minute Maid Park because obviously you have the high wall, it's a short fence in terms of distance from home plate, and then it angles out by the Mariners bullpen the visiting bullpen and then to add to all that fun you can see the out of town scores it's a manual scoreboard it's very textured and you don't know exactly where the ball is going to carry them if you get one that's smoked right off the wall in left field so it, it's kind of unique in a lot of ways it's difficult around the corner and then when you get up against the screens in left center field because there are a number of angles but I think that for most left fielders probably takes that fastball 90 miles an hour in the outer half. But where the where the out of town scoreboard is for most of them it'll be easy because you just basically put that on your back because it's only 315 mm -hmm. to that area. So if it's over your head pretty good idea yeah. that's going to leave the ballpark or hit off that wall. Anything else you can make a break in on. But once you get into the corner out there where that 362 is. That makes it difficult. Cano is immortal and makes it out to begin the top of the third as Nelson Cruz climbs in. They have the shift on for Nelly. Pulls it foul. Nelson with the base hit in an RBI, his first time up. Hit a change up towards the end of the bat, but he hit it right back up the middle. Pick up a hit. And the Astros have the shift on Altuve now on the left side of the infield. First time a Mariners hitter has swung at the first pitch here tonight from Fires. The 0 1. And a left. Kemp trying to get there. Has to play it on a bounce. And Nelson Cruz is two for two, a one out single. Good fastball. It's in off the plate. It jams him. Nelson will pick up a base hit on a soft line drive into left field. Doesn't have all that tape on his arm today. Nelson has been having an issue with his. Wrist and said it there. There's the tape. Typically, I'll have some black tape wrapped all the way around his wrist too, and it's been bothering him for a while. A couple of hits last night for Nelly. Two more here already in his first two at bats as Kyle Seeger climbs in. And you can see the shift. Kyle was able to beat the shift his first time up. Hit a change up past the first baseman Gonzalez. Now you mentioned earlier Mike that Kyle was your pick to click you mentioned that on the pregame show is there something about this matchup in particular you like. Well I think for Kyle he, he'd struggled a little bit but he had a couple of hits last night he looked comfortable to me and he was three for seven off of fires with a home run. Take those numbers. Curveball strike. One out, Cruz at first base. We play in the third. Another curve.
Saw that a lot in Seattle when Fires pitched well against the Mariners. The split change in the curveball was pitching down in the zone. I think if you threw his fastball, it was just to show it to you, or he'll move you off the plate and go right back to the changeup. You now the Mariners have a number of individual hitters who have already achieved a career high in certain categories or are approaching that. And for Kyle Seeger, his next RBI would be number 97. That would be a career best. Seeger drove in 96 back in his All Star season of 2014. Appeal down to third base. He does not go. Gary Cedarstrom, the crew chief, our home play or part of me, our third base umpire. Kyle already with a career high 29 home runs. A very realistic chance for a 3100 season for Kyle Seeger. Cruz is single at first base. And now the 3 2. Kemp in left field settles underneath it. Out number two. Now we take a look now at our CenturyLink. What's next? We hit the airwaves at 10:30 in the morning tomorrow. Day baseball from Houston. Paxton versus Fister. The Mariners really got to Fister his last time out. And Paxton, meanwhile, was brilliant in his last start. James has had a couple of days here in Houston to study these Astros hitters. As if he didn't know him well enough already. Two outs and one on. Brings in Adam Lynn. Starts him off with the curveball strike. Adam struck out swinging his first time up, and it was the curveball changeup early in the count. Ended up putting him away with a fastball up out of the zone. Castro gives this a look, but into the seats. 0 and 2. Mariners entered this series fifth in the league in runs, fifth in on base, tied for seventh in average in the American League. Offense almost across the board this year, if you look at from start to finish, has been one of the better offensive seasons for sure. In recent years for the Mariners. Third in home runs, and that's been a big part of their offense this year. About half their runs on the home run this year. Still owing two to Lynn. Well, of course, a big four game homestand coming up for the Mariners Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And as you might remember, the last year, Commissioner Manfred began the Everybody starts at the same time on game 162. And it'll be a little bit earlier first pitch on Sunday. This is a huge homestand for the Mariners coming up, especially given what's going on in the wild card race right now. Marisnik having to chase this back all the way to the base of the hill. Cruz into third base being waved home. Here's the throw. Castro can't hold on to it. Lind is into third. And the Mariners tack on another run. It's now four to two. Two out run production for the Mariners here in the third inning. It will be a double and an RBI for Adam Lynn moving to third on the throw and a lot of high fastballs. This one didn't quite get it to the top of the strike zone and he lines it into the gap. Nelson coming all the way around from first. Even though Marisnik was able to cut it off. Good hustle from Nelly. They had a chance to get him Correa with a strong throwing arm but it was a short hop to the catcher Castro he couldn't handle it. Strike one of Martin. I can see it be a little bit of a short hop hits the dirt. It was off the thumb of his catcher's glove. Mariners now lead it by two. And they've scored in every inning so far against Fires. Yeah. 
the 0 2. Now fires beginning to approach 60 pitches now with two outs in the third inning. A lot of curveballs from Fires. There's another two and two. Left hander getting loose in the pen for Houston. Like Kevin Chapman. Linded third base. And now full count. Last week or so, we've seen that a lot with Martin when they get two strikes on him, throwing the fastball top of the strike zone. He's had a tough time laying off of that pitch. Kevin Chapman, one of just two lefties in the bullpen. Here's the 3 2. Mariners tonight with two outs are four for five. Mariners getting a run of the first inning with two outs. Adam Lind aboard at third base. Strike three called. That ends the top of the third. But the Mariners grab another run as we go to the bottom of the third inning. Mariners by two. We take a look at Greater Coverage of Baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. This is pretty impressive. Most RBIs in a season against the Houston Astros. Hall of Famer Willie Stargell, what a year back in 1966. But the Mariners have Robinson Cano. Uh, so we have today to play and tomorrow. Robbie could easily climb this list another peg. An impressive list with Stargell and Strawberry, Dell Murphy. Robbie's done a lot of damage to the Astros this year. Six home runs with the 22 RBIs. One for two tonight, a double. Has scored a run. Lead off man George Springer looks at a strike. And quickly 0 and 2, and Felix has begun. To find his rhythm a little bit, 11 straight strikes thrown by the King. Well, this will be the challenge for him. Top four in the order. They're the ones that did the damage in the first inning to score the two runs. Felix threw only six pitches 
in the second inning. And half of those were in a leadoff strikeout. Our team just coasting back a few strides. We're very routine out number one. A couple of curveballs for Felix in that at bat. That was the pitch that was a really good pitch for him against Toronto. Now, have you seen him? We've talked about the curveball and how big it has been for him really since the start of last season. If you look at the numbers, it really rivals his change up at times with just how effective it is. Have, have you seen him save that curveball for later or like in the start we saw from him against the Blue Jays where he was throwing that curveball? From start to finish against Toronto he came out right away and was using all of his pitches his, his fastball command was excellent he was pitching on the corners he also something he rarely does he likes to pitch down in the zone but he elevated his fastball a number of times too which helped him out with his changeup. I talked to Felix earlier this year about his curveball and something that he was a real effective pitch for him last year. He's gotten away from it for a few years, basically went with his fastball and changeup, mixing in a slider from time to time. But he said that he felt that teams were starting to either lay off or look for his changeup more often. They needed another pitch. And so we wanted to go back to the curveball. It just turned out to be exceptional for him. Opponents this year hitting 217 off his curveball, 164 on his changeup. A strike because Gonzalez trying to bunt his way aboard. Robbie swings over in the shift. Marte over there as well. The one two. Bunting with two strikes and it hits him. Gonzalez of Bourne. And he's going to hit him with the curveball. That brings a tie and run to the plate in Jose Altuve, an RBI double and a run scored back in the first. Since the Astros joined the American League back in 2013, no one has more hits against the Mariners than Jose Altuve. Which does not come as a surprise. One of the best hitters in the game. Does not go around. They appealed out of first base. It's pretty amazing when you think about it with Altuve coming into the game, hitting an even 500, 11 for 22 off of Felix, and they doubled in his first hit bat. And you consider that right handed hitters this year are hitting just 212 off of Felix. You would figure this would normally be a good matchup with him for him because they have six right handed hitters in the lineup. One out and one on Gonzalez at first base after being hit by the pitch. It seemed like a couple of years ago, Mike, when we talked about Altuve and the high batting average and all the hits, we were kind of throwing in the claws. Look how many hits he gets on the infield because he runs so well. Yeah, the infield hits, yeah. we, we don't see that quite as much this year. He's hitting with a ton of pop and with great authority this season. Yeah, he has been. And the one thing, he's also was a very aggressive hitter, and I think he would get a lot of infield hits because he would chase pitches off the plate. And, you know, he hit those little numbers off the end of the bat, which was an advantage to him. But I think now this year, he's, he's tried to get pitches more in the strike zone, so that he could take more walks. Obviously, a lot of speed third in the American League in stolen bases, and also hit for more power. And he's been able to do that. Three and one. Very close. I think too he, he, he's he's smart enough to take advantage of a lot of fastballs in the middle of the plate especially when he gets ahead in the count because 
opposing teams they really don't want to walk him because he'll get himself into scoring position. I think he takes advantage of that. A walk turns into a double pretty fast with El Tuve. And you get swings like that. Ray and one a fastball at 88 miles an hour on the inside corner and he turns it loose. Just drops the kickstand. Now full count. Altuve with 24 home runs, a tying run. So they keep a watchful eye on Gonzalez. 12 steals this year. Has been caught six times. There goes Gonzalez deep into the corner and right Seth Smith is looking back and this is a foul ball. Very close. Felix didn't want to give into him comes back with a curveball and a three two count. Down the line, and it is clearly foul. At the distance. Gonzalez taken off. Ball four. Altuve has doubled. He's now walked. Now the go ahead run coming to the plate in the form of Carlos Correa. Correa with a base hit and an RBI his first time up. It was a first pitch curveball from Billy. It wasn't a bad pitch. Had it on the outside corner, probably right at the knees, and he dumped it in the right field for a hit. One out now two on. Strike one. Now Correa has been a major run producer for the Astros. And at the age of now 22. Just five RBIs make it six RBIs. Pardon me. With the one he's driven in today is now at 96. He's pushing 100 on the season. Inside on him. Now the top five of the order have littered the base path so far here tonight for the Astros. As Felix gets ahead. Something that we've seen from Correa this year, typically with runners in scoring position. He's going to stay in the middle of the field, try to hit the ball the other way. Felix trying to get a ground ball. The double play and get out of the inning. Felix on his changeup this year. Opponents are hitting his changeup on the ground at 68%. And he got a double play back in the first. And into the inning. Then a very quick second. Astros are making him pay for that here in the third. Two out, one out. And now Felix is one, two. To Marte. Over to Cano. And another double play. It gets Felix out of a jam here in the third inning.
Jesus Sucre leads off the Mariners fourth inning followed by Marte then Oki. Sucre dropped a single into right field right center field that Marisnik couldn't hold on to his last time up later scored. Out of the glove of Gonzalez stays with it and fires to first base in plenty of time. Leadoff man sat down and brings in Marte. Well, the most popular way to follow the Mariners' postseason push is with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. You can enjoy game day, live game video highlights, stat cast news, and more. Get MLB.com at bat app on your favorite device now. Nelson Cruz's target. We've seen it once already. Ball one to Cattell Marte. Marte with a base hit his first time up. He's struggling on the off speed pitches, hitting left handed. Was able to lay off of a couple of curveballs out of the strike zone. There's the changeup. Eventually was able to get a fastball he could handle. Now ahead of the count. Now big hit for Marte was just two for his previous 23 before that. RBI base hit back in the second. And now up three and one. Now the Mariners very much alive. Just two back with six games left. Rooting for the Blue Jays. Rooting for the Indians. This is rattled off the of Castro. Something a little notable for the Blue Jays, by the way. You might have seen multiple brawls with the Yankees in last night's game from Rogers Center. Joaquin Benoit had to leave the ballpark after the game last night on crutches. And he has a torn calf muscle. And has done, and Benoit, for his struggles with the Mariners, has been one of John Gibbons' best relievers. He's been fantastic. And his center, Marisnik closing on it easily. Two outs. Update you some on both of those games. Verlander, the Tigers, leading the Indians in a not so normal lineup after clinching the division last night, 6 0. Blue Jays. And Aaron Sanchez leading the Orioles 5 to 1. So that's a good thing for the Mariners as they play the last of the seventh. Blue Jays would go from plus one to two up if they end up winning that game over the Orioles. Mariners and Tigers tied two games back. Also, Devin Travis was a victim in that brawl as well, was a little dinged up too. You now, this young second baseman for him. He's been terrific. Heard it was a shoulder injury, and he had hurt his shoulder a couple of times last year. One and one to Aoki with two outs. George Springer, the right fielder, playing a little bit deeper this time. <laughs> a double over his head. Aoki's last at bat. Spins around for strike two. Now Fires has not worked a clean inning yet tonight. In fact, he has not worked an inning without giving up a run. But a chance for a one two three here in the fourth inning. And we see already at 74 pitches as he works here in the fourth. Curveball chops. Altuve gets rid of it quickly. And it is in time. For the first one two three frame spun by Mike Fires to go to the bottom of the fourth.
Seattle Mariners baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by BNSF. Proud to sponsor the BNSF Blast. And by CHI Franciscan Health, the Mariners' official partners in health. Learn to stay healthy at north at nwhealthy.org. Now the roof is open. Just the 12th time this year. Now the first time since May 20th here from Minute Maid Park. Normally we only see the roof open when we're here in April. Maybe, maybe. This is getting a little crazy, but <laughs> early in um, the month of May. Sometimes even in the summer when we come here, it's it's open. And then they end up closing it up later before batting practice. We'll have it closed up for you tomorrow, Aaron. No doubt. Yeah. It is amazing the number of local reporters that were almost up in arms with the fact that the roof would be open tonight when air conditioning is available. Felix ended up getting a double play ball on Correa to end the bottom of the third inning. It was on his best fastball, 93 miles an hour in on his hands. Good changeup right there. To Felix. Easy out number one. Well, time to take a look at the Mariners calendar brought to you by Sleep Train. The series wraps up tomorrow with James Paxton up on the mound. Day baseball here from Houston. And then the final four games of the season Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday against the A's. If there were to be a play in game, that would be on Monday the 3rd. We are exactly one week away from the American League wild card game. What exactly does the next week have in store for the Mariners? Leadoff man retired. Here is Guriel. A deep strike one. Felix starting to find the edges of the plate with his fastball. That's a good changeup tonight. Line and a snare harpooned by Marte. A screamer for out number two. It's going to be a changeup right at the bottom of the strike zone. Drops the barrel on it and a well timed lead by Marte. That was hit right on the button. We're talking about Dave Valley catching Randy Johnson's high fastball. It was something like that. But you'd have to do it about 40, 45 <laughs> times in an evening. Hopefully, you don't have to jump that high. First two sat down, it brings in Tony Kemp. Very quick inning for Felix. He had a six pitch second, a seven pitch fourth for the King.
run lead to the top of the fifth inning here in Houston. Ride to the game stress free from Sound Transit's new Link Light Rail stations, Capitol Hill and FU Dub. Now open. You can plan your trip at soundtransit.org. A little, a little like that, not quite. That was the prototype. Fires to face Smith, Cano, and Cruz. Shift is on for Seth Smith. A couple of good at bats for Seth tonight. Lined out to the center fielder. Picked up a sacrifice fly, RBI. One ball and one strike. Earlier in the game, Aaron, we were talking about Fires pitching backwards to the Mariners in Seattle, and it was effective. He hasn't been able to do that tonight because he just has not had the same command of his curveball. Doesn't seem like it's been for a lack of trying. Myers coming over the deadline last year from the Brewers, a National League pitcher before that trade. Got the curveball down out of the strike zone. Now the 2 2. Good foul. Two balls and two strikes. Of course, Carlos Gomez was part of that deal as well. It's never did quite catch on here in Houston. Now with the Texas Rangers, a division champion. It was just straight up released by the Astros. On the weak side of the infield, dropped by Guriel. Smith retired. That brings in Cadeau. Our Century Link, what's next? Very excited to see James Paxton tell the slab his 20th start of the season tomorrow, taking on Duck Fister. We are on the air at 10.30 in the morning, day baseball, here from downtown Houston inside Minute Maid Park. James has been dominant his last outing. He's 98 miles an hour with that great curveball. Now Cano actually made an out in his last at bat. Was caught looking at a fastball. Double and a run scored back in the first inning. Going after the first pitch. Saw it off. Seen that a couple of times from Fires to Robbie throwing that cut fastball right around 86 87 miles an hour in off the plate. Now we mentioned that we had a chat with AJ Hinch today about Robinson Cano. This is one of the things that he referenced and we've heard this from AJ before this season that Robbie is such a difficult guy to know exactly how to pitch to because he can do what we just saw go after the first pitch and when he has done that this year he's been wildly successful both in terms of the average and the damage especially the home runs or. We see this all the time, Mike. He can go up there, and he might as well not even have a bat in his hands. He's as still as a statue, and he's already the done that tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you just don't know. And when we talked to Robbie about it, he just smiled and said, <laughs> "So it's working," and that's all he would expand on it. Uh, apparently. <laughs> Castro tracking this, but out of his range. 0 oh and 2. The other thing that Hinch mentioned about Cano is how balanced he is. And a lot of the things that he was describing about his game, Cano's that is, I said to AJ, well, this sounds a lot like you could also be talking about Jose Altuve. And he said, yeah, but for as great as Jose is, 
He mentioned the balance, and it just kind of seemed like he was also talking about some pitch selection as well for, for Robbie. That's probably true, and I think his balance is much better this year because he's healthy. And the field down to 30 does not go. Had to make some adjustments to his swing last year just to try to survive the season. It's been nicked up a little bit this year, but nothing compared to what he had to deal with last year. One well, out, nobody on top of the fifth. And Kiddo strikes out for the second straight at bat. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Seattle Mariners and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Seattle Mariners. We'll bring up Nelson Cruz having a good night. Two for two. He's picked up an RBI. Nelson leads the club with 102 RBIs. And you can see early in yesterday's game, last night's game, Cruz really grimacing, and then was able to pick up his first hit in the eighth inning. Ended up with two hits last night, and since the eighth inning last night, Nelly four for his last five. And you can see that hurts him. Really is just it's a matter of how much pain can he take because when he swings and misses that he barely ticked it. It's going to cause him pain and it'll calm down eventually, but it takes a little bit of time. Nelly, one of six major leaguers now with 40 home runs this season. Lost his helmet. I'm wondering with the way that he spun around, you, you never see that from him. If he was just trying to help himself out, trying to relieve some of that pain in his wrist. It has to be more difficult, hurt more on pitches that are up in the zone. Retires his side in order for the second straight inning as he gets Nelson Cruz a little dinged up. Well, Mike's have to take a look at our Columbia Bank difference of the game. Marisnik very close here. 
Normally a catch that he makes even though it takes an extraordinary effort. And then Springer over his head. Oki picking up an RBI as a result. And the Mariners making some plays. How about this snap? And Felix appreciates the good defense. Got to catch a break every now and then. You saw the play by Marisnik as Nolan Ryan here at the ballpark tonight. An executive advisor for the Astros. Of course, his son, his oldest son, Reed. The Astros president of baseball operations or business operations, I should say. Many years with the Rangers in their front office, now with Houston. Castro leading off the bottom of the fifth. Shift is on for Castro. Could all very deep and right. Felix really had to work through the first inning. That's when he gave up the two runs. To get through the next three fairly easily. A couple of double play balls have helped him out tonight. Cano charges in right field and throws to first base at a time for round number one. Put that down 9 3 in your scorebook. Here's Marisnik. Now, Marisnik last year, Mike, we saw him early in the season. And this it was is, as hot as anybody. Yeah, this is not an exaggeration. He was playing like an all star outfielder. The first month, month and a half of the year, the numbers tapered. Former Marlin. This year in spring training, you can see Marisnik is a big guy, very athletic. And in spring training, they, they really thought that maybe he could get some more power out of his swing. They tried to incorporate a higher leg kick, really messed him up. Did not have a good spring as, as a result. Struggled in the early part of the season, and it just kind of seems like he's had a hangover effect from that ever since he enters tonight, batting barely 200. So he needs a new plan and needs to put in a lot of work this winter. The 0 2 from Felix. There's an elevated fastball from Felix, 92 miles an hour right at the top of the strike zone. Again, against the Blue Jays, he pitched so well, and he did that a number of times in that outing. One and two. And only six pitches in the second, only seven pitches in the fourth. Gets Marisnik spinning around like a top. Comes in with the curveball, two outs. And the second strikeout for Felix. We finish at home a huge four game series against the Oakland A's Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday. A lot on the line for the Mariners. As the Mariners entering tonight two games back with six left to go. And those four games especially Sunday Felix will be up on the mound Kings Court will be in session from Safeco Field. It's going to be huge. Back to the top of the order Springer. Looking at the A's rotation, by the way, and things can change, but if Bob Melvin's rotation stays in line, the Mariners will miss Sonny Gray by one day. Gray activated off the disabled list has had a very difficult year, both in terms of production and injury. And maybe you say, with the way that Gray has pitched this season, maybe you want to face him, but his numbers at Safeco Field would indicate otherwise. One thing that I like is they're only going they're going to see only one left-hander. Manaya going to throw the game on Sunday, it looks like. And we'll face Felix if everything stays in line. Mariners have been much better against right handed starters this year.
Well, suddenly a rare three ball count from Felix, his first since walking out to Bay back in the third inning. Marwin Gonzalez waiting on deck. He was hit by a pitch his last time up. He was hit him with a curveball. Full count. Felix making only his third start against the Astros since the beginning of last year. And his first year at Minute Maid Park since June of last season. The 3 2. Springer just flicks it into right field. Two for three tonight. It comes with two outs. Well, you're going to have to give him a lot of credit for this. This is a curveball. It's down out of the strike zone off the plate, and he's able to stay with it just long enough. Keeps his hands back. Just kind of flips it into right field. But a pretty good pitch from Felix trying to get him to chase that curveball. He was able to do it, but unfortunately, it turned into a base hit. Marwin Gonzalez representing the tying run. 13 home runs on the year, hit by a pitch with two strikes his last time up. Now the first pitch quickly skipping out to Kiddo, vacuums it up. And that does it for the Astros here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Mariners by two. By two as we move to the top of the sixth inning. Now there's no message that can't wait. Remember, drunk drugs are high. It's a DUI. Help us all reach Target Zero. Learn more at TargetZero.org. Five innings. That's it for Mike Fires. He is done for the night. Take a look at his final line. Had to throw a lot of pitches to get through five innings. Five innings, eight hits, four runs. They were all earned. Didn't walk anybody. Five strikeouts, but he had to throw 90 pitches to get through the five innings. Kevin Chapman going to take over. This will be his seventh appearance. The RA just above five, only five and a third for him so far. Good fastball, right around 91 miles an hour. Has a changeup curve and slider. Well, the Mariners getting to fires. They tagged him for eight hits, more than he'd given up in his last two starts combined. So nice work by the Mariners. Says left on left to begin the sixth inning. And ball one. Kyle Seeger, one for two. And I mentioned earlier 
How good this offense has been this year for the Mariners and Seager with 96 RBIs. The Mariners have a chance and a very very realistic chance to have three guys with 100 RBIs. It would be the first time the Mariners would do that since 2001. Of course, Nelly now with 102 on the season, including one earlier tonight. Cano at 94. But Brett Boone, Mike Cameron, and a man in the dugout, Edgar, all with 100 plus back in 01. Well, good count for Kyle. Still looking for his 30th home run on the year. 2 0, Chapman threw him a breaking ball for a strike. See what he wants to do here 3 and 1. Slicing out to Kemp in left field. One down. It's a fight to the finish as the Mariners host the A's for the final four games of the regular season starting this Thursday with the playoff spot still on the line. It's a weekend you do not want to miss. Visit Mariners.com for tickets. A's have dropped six of their last seven. In a series right now with the Angels. We hope to see it at Safeco Field. Those are going to be big time games. Adam has an RBI tonight. Hit a double in the right center field gap. Pick up his RBI. One for two. Tomahawks is out to center. In front of Marisnik. And a one out base hit. Lynn reaching for the second time. A double now a single. This is a high fastball, probably in off the plate. And as Aaron said, he just <laughs> tomahawks it into center field. Now, Mike, I know you're you're big into the numbers. We, we talk we talk about this all the time for the game, lunch, dinner. You're, you're number you are a numbers guy, Mike. You enjoy these things. Where are you going with this, Aaron? High pop up. Can't say this often. Can the wind take it out? It's a couple of rows deep. Came across a stat today that was absolutely mind blowing about your former teammate Edgar Martinez. So much talk all the time about Edgar, David Ortiz, greatest DH of all time. You know, it is possible for both of them to be really good, and they both are incredible hitters. David the award Ortiz. named after Edgar. Absolutely. Yeah. David Ortiz, Mike, would have to reach base safely. 658 times without making an out in his final few games of the regular season to pass Edgar for career on base percentage. I think about that. I don't like his chances. <laughs> and when I was looking at Edgar's numbers for his career, and you think about on base percentage and we've talked about Edgar the only time Edgar ever struck out a hundred times in a season was his final year when he was 41 his on base percentage that year was 342 so pretty good work by Edgar in his final year got a pitch and change two on one out top of the sixth.
Here at the top of the sixth inning, Mariners threatening for more, already leading by a margin of two. A final from Toronto. Blue Jays take down the Orioles. That's good news for the Mariners. Great and news. The Mariners were trailing the Orioles by two games. Tigers and Verlander leading big time. As we take a look at the updated Delta Airlines keep climbing standings. So the Mariners and the Tigers, a game and a half back right now of the Orioles. Blue Jays now plus two. And at this point, you're hoping for the Blue Jays just to keep knocking the Orioles down a couple of pegs. Here is Yandel Gustave. This is 12th appearance, 3.65 ERA. Good fastball at 97 miles an hour and a slider. Ball one to Sucre. Aaron Sanchez, by the way, the starter tonight for the Blue Jays with 10 strikeouts facing the Orioles over six innings. A fine work for Sanchez. Correa near the bag at second, steps on it, hurdles, and throws on the money to first base. Sucre bounces to the double play. That sends us to the bottom of the sixth inning. You don't see too many walk off fielders choices. It's not the most routine way to win a ball game, but that's what Austin Jackson did. And in terms of Felix Mike, if the Mariners needed him to pitch further deeper in the game, as Jim mentioned, was pulled after the score from Texas came out. Felix looked like he would have struck out 15. He was on fire. That no, day. He, he really was. But with the amount of innings and the strikeouts that he had that year, once it was over, it was over. So you had to take care of him, get out of the game. But you're right. He was he was going to win that game regardless. Yeah. That was awesome. What an awesome day at Safeco until that sixth inning. But Felix, what did he do his part? Altuve leads off the bottom of the sixth. Now, Mike, you mentioned it last night. You mentioned it earlier this evening as well. The importance of handling Springer, Gonzalez, Altuve, Correa, Gaddis as well. Top five of the order tonight, five for ten. They have been all over the base paths as this is stung into left field and it continues. Altuve reaching for the third time. An RBI double to walk. Now barrels up the single to left. And that's why it's important to get the first two hitters out in front of them. Altuve came into the game hitting an even 500 against Felix. And every now and then, the other guy just has your number. And that's the case with Altuve. You have to keep an eye on him at first base. You need to make him stop. Last night he had a little bit of a walking lead and was able to get a steal easy. Didn't give Zanino much of a chance to throw him out.
Tying run is Carlos Correa with 20 home runs, 96 RBIs. Strike one. Correa, an RBI single back in the first, a double play ball in the third. And Felix in great shape with his pitch count, just 64 pitches, 42 strikes. Lind holding out Tuve. Watch out, bends him back. Started him off with a curveball for strike one. Correa turned it loose, so Felix just moves him back a little bit. A two seam fastball at 91 miles an hour. Now, memories of what he did with the Blue Jays. Something that guy would do. I mentioned his son, Reed Ryan, right behind him. Astros threatening here in the bottom of the sixth. <laughs> Left side and through. <laughs> Tied run on base. They have the go ahead coming up. Back to back singles to begin this bottom of the sixth inning. This is the base hit on his changeup. It's down at the bottom of the strike zone. Gaddis with an infield hit, grounded back to Felix. Top five of the order now, seven for 12 tonight. Ball one to Gaddis. Astros just one for three with runners in scoring position. In the first inning and third inning, Felix was able to get double play ball and get himself out of trouble. Now one and one. First base Altuve, great speed at second. And Felix ahead of the count. Yeah, that took a bite out of Sucre. Played umpire Eric Cooper going to give him a little bit of time. Talked about it with Felix earlier in the game in his changeup. It's been his best pitch for a long time. And typically when he's trying to get a double play, he'll use his changeup. Opponents hitting it on the ground 68% of the time. Two on, nobody out. Felix ahead. The Kings one, two. Check swing, and he goes around. Gaddis is done, and a much needed out number one here in the sixth inning. Felix working down out of the strike zone. Looks like a curveball. Mike was mentioning the double plays behind Felix, two of them so far tonight. Guriel, who's climbing in here with one out and two on, has bounced into a double play in five of his last seven at bats. 
Well, his last at bat, he ended up getting a changeup. It was up a little bit in the zone, and he hit a line drive right at Marte. Marte making a leaping catch at shortstop, but he hit it hard. Felix went three innings in a row tonight without allowing a hit. Has given up back to back singles to begin his bottom of the sixth inning and now falls behind 2 0. Three and nothing. Tony Kemp on deck. Bottom four of this order, beginning with Guriel at the plate right now, hitless so far tonight. Felix trying to keep that in order. The King behind, here's his 3 0, and he's able to pour in a strike. And play and looking for the third double play tonight a wide throw. Altuve race it home the throw and Sucre is able to put a block on it but that's it. Altuve is safe he scores and the Astros are within a run. Well this is a double play that should be turned it's right to Marte. It looked to me when he caught the ball and he decided he was going to take it on his own. It took him a little bit of time to get the ball out of his glove. As he was crossing the bag. He was still trying to get the exchange and a wide throw at first. So it looked like Felix was going to get out of the inning. It didn't happen. Now Felix got what he wanted. Got the double play ball. First pitch to Tony Kemp showing bunts and looking at his strike. Space representing the tie and run. Sixteen pitches this inning for Felix. scoring for the first time since getting two runs across in the first. Felix faced the minimum in the second did so again in the fourth very efficiently. One of the things that we talked about yesterday Aaron in this season long matchup with the Astros the Mariners making quite a few more errors than Houston and that's been the difference in a lot of unearned runs. Eight of them entering tonight's game. In fact, entering the series, 14 errors for the Mariners, eight leading to eight unearned runs against the Astros this season. And when you look at the head-to-head -head matchups, and just three for Houston, right? And you yeah. look at the head-to-head -head matchups, the runs per game were 
pretty close for a series that has been somewhat lopsided for the Astros. They had won 10 of the 16 entering this series last night. Well, when you consider how many one run games the Mariners yeah. play, that makes a huge difference. For sure. Full count. Felix trying to send this one to the seventh. The three two to Kemp. Walks him. Second walk tonight from Felix. Bregman going to pinch hit. And Mel Stoudemire making a trip out of the dugout. Felix now at 81 pitches. Nobody getting loose in the Mariner bullpen. Now Bregman, who has been injured this year with a hamstring, took batting practice today. Also went through fielding workouts. One of the best players in the minors this year. In fact, the USA Today Minor League Player of the Season. So here's Bregman. Looking at strike one. Safe to say this is a surprise to see Bregman here. He's playing for the first time since September 14th. He's not even on the roster. 0 oh 2. And it was the hamstring injury that he suffered before the Astros were last in Seattle, which kept him from facing the Mariners. So here he is. Someone A.J. Hinch described as one of their best players. The 0-2. Real at second base. Kemp with the walk at first. Tie and run at scoring position. Bregman into left field on a bounce in front of Oki. Here comes his throw on the way home. The tie. You get to this point in the season, and those extra outs will hurt you. Pretty good pitch by Felix. It was a curveball down out of the strike zone. Bregman hits it off the end of the bat, but able to get it into left field. I mentioned that hamstring for Bregman. He gets lifted for a pinch runner, Max Stassi. So Stassi running to first base. Service saying last night after the game that well, the Mariners are somewhat used to playing games like this. Nobody said it'd be easy. Check swing, tight to the line. Lynn, foot race, and on slide. He's safe. Kemp to third. Be the second error of the inning. Take a look at it. Oh, that is close. 
Let me take a look at this one. I think maybe he gets his foot down in time. Close play. We talked about Mariznik at the start of the game. He, for a big man, he can really run. Well, that is about as close as it gets. And the unfortunate part is I'm not sure that we've seen anything. Called him safe. Felix like to catch a break right here. Here's a look at our premier Supermo and see if Adam gets his foot down in time and it looks as if he does. Felix's leg blocking things a little bit. He needs a break. So wisely service is challenging this. Cedarstrom with the glasses to Kuchi. And if it holds, the Astros will have the bases loaded with two outs for George Springer, who would be the eighth batter of this inning. The other part of the equation is Felix was in great shape with his pitch count. He's had to throw some extra pitches here in the inning. This one's taking some time to look at. Base is loaded. All it took was a bobble. Also turns the lineup over. Leadoff hitter George Springer going to step in. He has a couple of hits tonight and scored a run. Nowhere for Felix to put him. Now Springer, we've made mention before, 28 home runs. Three of those have been grand slams. As Storm begins to stir. Now the first pitch into the corner in right field and dropping. It is a fair ball. Kick in. Stassi is in. Marisnik all the way around from first base. They're going to send Marisnik back to third, bounce into the seats, take a runoff, but nonetheless, 6 4 Astros. Right down the line. It's hard to tell from where we're at whether it was going to stay fair or foul as Seth Smith chases it. Just inside the line as it bounces into the stands. Second and third, two outs for Gonzalez, the ninth batter of this sixth inning. Will be the fifth batter since the double play wasn't turned. Now that's what you circle in this frame. Now 26 pitches in the inning, 87 total for Felix. Calls out Sucre. Four runs in for the Astros, and they're half the sixth. Typically in this situation, Felix would not give in to the hitter with first base open, but Altuve waiting on deck. He's going to have to try to find a way to retire Gonzalez. A 
Altuve has been on base all three times, including a couple of hits. Well outside. Now one and one. Another hit. Marisnik in. Springer rounding, scoring, standing. Eight. For Astro. The wheels have fallen off here in the bottom of the sixth. And Scott Service quickly out of the dugout. He's going to make a pitching change. Storen has been warming up. He will face out two bands. It's on the change up, it's up in the zone, just off the outside corner. Six runs, five hits, and two errors for the Mariners at the bottom of the sixth inning. Could not turn two to end the inning. A couple of errors by the Mariners in this bottom of the sixth, and the Astros have Chase Felix as you can see his final line here. Turned out to be critical. Five and two thirds, ten hits, eight runs. Again, a couple of errors behind them. Two walks, three strikeouts. Felix ended up throwing 90 pitches. Drew Storen wanted to try to get out of the inning. This will be his 55th appearance on the year. Fastball 92 miles an hour, slider, split changeup. Mariners had a 4 2 lead when we began this bottom of the sixth, which began with the Jose Altuve single. He has been one of these six runners to score in this inning. Quick look to Gonzalez at first. Another multi hit game tonight for Altuve. That 
Brad Benson back. That looked like a backup slider. We'll take a look. Want the slider down and away. Uh, maybe the change up at 82 miles an hour. Dropping into center. Kiddo calling for it. And that will finally end the bottom of the sixth inning. Damage done by the Astros. By his defense in the bottom of the sixth inning as we go to the top of the seventh. I'll be sure to stick around after the game for Mariners post game. Presented by Delta Airlines with Jen and Val. All that coming up once this one comes to a close. Four runs earned, four runs unearned for Felix as Max Stassi stays in the game, took over as a pinch runner, does the catching for Castro. Yeah, a couple of critical errors for the Mariners in that inning. 9 1 and 2 for the Mariners. It'll be Marte, Aoki, and Smith. Mariners are now trailing for the first time tonight. Ball one to begin the top of the seventh. Right line now, right line. Mariners, in fact, trailing for the first time this series. Went in last night, four to three. Well, you don't have to get all four of them back right here, but you like to get a couple. You get a couple guys on, then you get to the middle of the lineup in Cano and Cruz, Seeger. This Astros bullpen last night was spectacular, especially in terms of the strikeouts, but it was not many days ago against the Angels where it was just the Titanic and it just imploded. It was horrible. It cost them games that they really needed against the Angels. Well, the good news is the Mariners bullpen has been excellent, so hopefully they can just hold them right where they're at, give them a chance to get back in this game. Both Captain Marte leading off the Mariners seventh. Mm -hmm. 
Breaks his bat. Correa charges with two hands. Gets rid of it quickly. One up, one down. Make this Thursday a night out at the ballpark with the entire family. When the Mariners meet the A's at 710, you can get in on the action for less when you buy a Safeco Insurance Grand Slam family package. A ticket, a hot dog, and a Pepsi are available at a very special package value price. You can secure your savings at Mariners.com. Dan Altavilla getting loose. Oki stares at ball one. A reminder earlier that the Blue Jays beat the Orioles. Very good news for the Mariners. The Tigers whitewashed the Indians 12 to nothing. Justin Verlander, who's having a Cy Young type season, seven and two thirds scoreless with 12 strikeouts. Three and zero. Oh. So that quite not as good a news for the Mariners. Mariners rooting for the Indians in that series, but after the Indians clinched last night, won their first division title since so seven, not exactly their regular lineup as Oki takes a four pitch walk. One out and one out for Seth Smith. Brent Strom, pitching coach for Houston, on his way out to the mound. Robinson Cano comes out on deck with the numbers that he has put up all year against Houston. You'd like to see him walk up to the plate with a couple of runners on. Seth with an RBI hit the ball hard to center field, lined out. It's first time up. Yeah, that was grooved out to center field, but made for a play for Marisnik. Activity inside the bullpen. Now for the Astros, Chris Davinsky getting loose. Houston with a six run bottom of the sixth inning, aided by two Mariners errors. One out, one on for Smith. Give a little more context to that bottom of the sixth inning when you put it in you know, the time frame of Felix this year. Only seven unearned runs behind Felix all season, four alone in that half inning. Well, and the shame of it is he was able to get the double play ball he wanted to get out of the inning. If they'd have been able to turn it, they would not have scored all the runs coming right. after that. Two and one. Shortstop Correa swung over in the shift. And the count evens up. Few teams shift more than the Astros. You can say the same thing about the Mariners. One out, one on. And the 2 2. Cano looming on deck. Oh 
Smith climbs in ready to go. Altuve charges shovel to Correa to first not in time. Now we take a look at the race for the best record in the American League. Rangers Red Sox both with 92 wins 65 losses the Indians just a game back. You can see the implications here. They've got a pitching change. Davinsky coming in out of the bullpen. He inherits a runner at first base that Smith he will face Robinson Cano. Seattle Mariners baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Money Tree, proud to make a donation to Mariners Care for every Mariners win. Now the home run pump right up there in left center field, right, right above the left side of Towles Hill. Over 1,500. Davinsky taking over. Facing Cano. Speaking of home runs, Robbie with a couple of them last night, including the go-ahead home run in the 11th inning. Uh, the first pitch to the gap in right center. Smith chugging into third base. He's held there. It's the second double tonight for Robinson Cano. He is locked in jumps on a first pitch fastball at 93 miles an hour. Out over the plate. Mariners have two in scoring position with two outs for Nelson Cruz. Nelson drove in a run in the first inning with a base hit back up the middle. Came after Robinson Cano's first double of the ball game. Davinsky fastball change up curve slider. He's been very stingy against right. He's batting beneath 190 against him. He has 48th appearance on the air ERA just over two. 102 strikeouts and just 20 walks in 107 innings. Opponents hitting just 206. 0 and 2. Cruz waving after it. Mariners strand runners in second and third.
It's the seventh inning. Do you know where your winning numbers are? Download the Washington's Lottery mobile app and everything will be just a tap away. Happy you could join us here on a pleasant night from downtown Houston. Aaron Goldsmith, Mike Flowers, our entire Root Sports crew. As the Mariners now find themselves trailing in this one after taking a lead to the bottom of the sixth inning. And Alta Villa up on the mound now for the Mariners. Good fastball from Dan. He'll be in the upper 90s with a hard slider. Correa Gaddis do up for Houston. So Storen goes a third of an inning. He gets the Mariners out of the six by retiring out two bang. So not a walk in the park for Alta Villa here in the seventh. Made his major league debut in Chicago not long ago. Made the jump right from double A up to the big leagues. Just his 12th appearance, but he has really pitched well. ERA right at one. Seven strikeouts to one walk in nine innings. Old one to Correa leading off the last of the seventh. Talking with Mike Zanino the other day about Carlos Correa. He said that he has seen Correa improve tremendously just this year and even just from one series to another. And that's saying something for a guy who's already so good. Last year's rookie of the year. And he was mentioning how it's just so difficult to get Correa out because he can just simply cover so much of the plate. Well, it's what you would expect. I mean, obviously, he has a lot of talent, and the more that he plays at this level, the more he's going to learn. And we were talking about it earlier in the game with runners in scoring position this year. The thing I've noticed with him is he will hit the ball up the middle the other way, not try to do too much with it. Probably going to get stronger. 20 home runs on the year. Good ballpark for him to hit in. Still one and two. Playing Correa pretty straight up. The 2 2. Right through it. 97 on the gun. Good start from Alta Villa here in the last of the seventh. It's a challenge of fastball in the outer half of the plate. Probably belt high. Throws it by him after a couple of sliders. That brings in Evan Gaddis with one out of nobody on. On the first pitch. Dunks it into left field in front of Aoki. Second hit tonight from Gaddis. His first out of the infield. One out, one on for Guriel. Jumped on a first pitch slider. It was up out over the plate. Top five of the order have feasted tonight for the Astros. Ten for 18. Oh, and one to Guriel.
The Astros have not won a home series this month. They have dropped all three series here from their home ballpark in September. Mariners winning last night, having to come from behind now all of a sudden here this evening. And really, if you think about the Astros and this season, the reason why they are still alive and breathing and in the conversation, if you go back to their 18 and 8 month of June, and A.J. Hinch's ball club at one point in that stretch won 12 of 14. Since then, they're two games over 500. Off the hands, a chop to Seeger. Cano, only play they'll have there on Gaddis. Fielder's choice for Guriel, two outs. Paxton versus Fister tomorrow, 10 30. We are on the airwaves. Day baseball here from Minute Maid Park. Paxton, 109 punch outs to 23 walks. We'll be making start number 20 tomorrow against Fister. James in his last outing was 95 to 98 miles an hour. Had a good curveball, still not using his slider. Occasional changeup. Really pitched well. Even with the struggles for Houston in this month, there's still five games over 500 here in their home ballpark. Kemp looks at ball one. If you look at where these teams stood entering the series last night, the Mariners and the Astros had 82 wins. They were within a half game of each other. They had the same number of wins at home. They had identical records on the road. High out to the manual scoreboard. Aoki bends his knees and he makes a squeeze for out number three. That ends the inning. Mariners are down to their final six outs in this one tonight. It's Kyle Seager to begin the top of the eighth. Looks at ball one from Davinsky. Kyle one for three tonight. A couple of fly outs to left.
Here comes the 1 1. Fidel Nuno getting loose inside the bullpen. Shift is on for Seeger. Now the count evens up. Out to center. Marisnik has it in its sights. One down. That ushers in Adam Lind. Adam with a couple of hits, including a double. We were talking last night about among the teams in the postseason who have locked a spot, the Cleveland Indians, who won the Central last night. And despite the celebrations for Terry Francona's club, Corey Kluber having to leave that game because of a groin injury and an MRI revealing today that a mild strain for Kluber's quad and a timetable to return of about seven to ten days so that could have been a lot worse. He was supposed to make his last start on Saturday so that's not going to happen. They need him for the postseason no doubt about that. One ball and two strikes to Lind with one out. Red Sox had a chance to clinch the East tonight, but lots of the Yankees. Easy jog for Marisnik, two outs. Of course, the West has been settled by the Rangers. That win for the Yankees ends up snapping the Red Sox 11 game winning streak. Two outs it brings in Martin. Yankees enter today five games outside of the second wild card. That was a game where. He really thought the Red Sox would lock down the East. They had David Price up on the mound, but Price coughed up six runs on a dozen hits. One and two. Kavinsky's best off speed pitch is his changeup, and he has a good one tonight. Levels the count two balls and two strikes. Felix going just five and two thirds tonight after at one point really cruising after the start of the second inning. Two errors by the Mariners of the sixth inning leading to four unearned runs. And knocking the King out earlier than it looked like he would be exiting as the top of the eighth comes to a quick close. The side retired in order for the third time tonight.
leading eight to four. A lot of hits, 11 on each side. Well, we hope to see you at Safeco Field starting Thursday night. Big time homestand, the final homestand of the regular season for the Mariners against the Oakland A's. It will be Felix starting on Sunday, game 162. Well, it's been shaped up to be the biggest games of the season for the Mariners, certainly on that pace right now. Vidal Nuno up on the mound now for the Mariners. Fifty fourth appearance for Nuno, ERA three and a half. Fastball right around 90 miles an hour, slider curveball changeup from Nuno. Stassi's first at bat took over as a pinch runner. Now Stassi on the season just seven at bats in the majors. Inside a ball and two strikes. And Nuno makes quick work of Stassi to begin the bottom of the eighth inning. And Vidal has done a little bit of everything for the Mariners this year, picking up a strikeout 86 miles an hour on that last pitch for the slider. One up, one down. It brings in Marisnik. Breaks his bat. Arte charges. That ball slows out. Flattens up and a little bit of a wide throw, but Lind able to handle it. Quickly, two outs. Look at the production. We've hammered this a number of times for the Astros. Top five in the order for the Astros tonight. Each hitter has either two hits or two RBIs. And in Springer's case, he has done both. He has three hits. He's driven in two and he has scored twice. Well, when you're playing the Astros, and that's where the extra outs, the walks, those types of things will end up hurting you because when you look at their lineup, it really is the first four in their lineup that can do a lot of the damage, and they certainly have done that tonight. So you have to try to limit how many times they walk to the plate. and. With a couple of errors in the sixth inning and a walk, ended up costing the Mariners. One ball and one strike to Springer with two outs. Former first round draft pick out of UConn. Almost falls down as he clips the home plate umpire a little bit. And Eric Cooper. That was Springer back in the sixth inning that gave the Astros a two run lead. On a double into right field. Springer giving Cooper a little bit of time. Two outs, nobody on bottom of the eighth inning. When we get to the top of the ninth, last try for the Mariners, eight, nine, and one duo. Sucre, Marte, and Oki. Pat Nishek. And the bullpen getting loose. Funky right hander. Strike three called. He gets him. 
And Nuno faces the minimum. A one, two, three, bottom of the eighth. Mariners down to their final three outs. Thank you, Jen. A lot to cover once this one comes to a close. Pat Neshek out of the bullpen up on the mound. Sidearm right-hander. This will be his 59th appearance on the year. Sinker slider combination. Occasional changeup from him. His fastball right around 89 miles an hour. Facing Mike Freeman pinch hitting. Pinch hitting for Jesus Sucre. Freeman a waiver wire claim by Jerry DePoto coming over from the Diamondbacks. Popped up off the hands. Guriel with two hands. One out. Tomorrow James Paxton up on the Mount Day baseball here from Houston. It's Doug Fister. Two outs left tonight for the Mariners. Here is Marte. Mariners at one point tonight led four to two before a six run, five hit, two error. Final of the sixth inning. Strike one. Mariners winning last night four to three oh, another one run game for the Mariners. That was their third straight. Tanisha. Sign on toss to first. One out left for the Mariners tonight. And Vogel back. Batting for Oki. Well, go back one for ten on the season.
Twenty three years old born in Orlando High School in Fort Myers Florida. One and one. Maristic coming in. And that's the ball game. Costly bottom of the sixth inning. You go back to it. Felix was in some trouble, needed to get a double play. He had the double play right there by the bag with Marte. And Marte had a some trouble with the exchange. Poor throw to first, does not get the double play. And unfortunately, there was another error that followed, and four unearned runs end up scoring in that inning and when you get to this point in the season you just cannot afford those kinds of mistakes if they turn the double play Felix leaves the field still ahead four to two so costly costly mistake no doubt the turning point of